section 13.2, line integrals, video 11. I felt it was prudent to do one more review video before moving into line integrals over vector fields. So let's review the following concepts, work, position vectors, tangent vectors, and unit tangent vectors. There are some things that we already know about work uh, from previous, excuse me, from previous sections in this book and, and previous classes as well. For example, back when we first learned to do single integrals, one application was work of a particle moving along the x-axis from point A to point B. With a certain force acting on it, depending upon its position, where the force acting on that particle is the function f of x. So if x equals 2, then I would substitute 2 into the function, and it would give me the force acting on that particle, positive being, being in the, to the right, and negative being to the left. Then you can calculate the work done in moving that particle from A to B by integrating the force function from A to B. So it was a pretty simple um, integral, pretty simple setup. Integrate the force function, you get the work done to move the particle. Um, but if you, have, if you have a particle in space with the force acting on it, and the force acting on it is vector f, and the particle moves linearly from a point P to a point Q, then the work done is the dot product of the force vector and the displacement vector D, uh, the vector that goes from point P to point Q. So if you knew the coordinates of P and the coordinates of Q, you would just do the Q coordinates minus the P coordinates and that would give you the displacement vector. Uh, we'll be using these when we build the um, setup for the line integral over a vector field. And what we'll also be using are position vectors, tangent vectors, and unit vectors. Just recall that a position vector is just a vector function that says, here's a function to tell you your i component, here's a, uh, a function to tell you your j component, and here's a function to tell you your k component. So these would all be scalar functions because they take in a number and return a number, but collectively they make a vector function and you could also write this using vector notation. You could say xt, yt, zt. Unfortunately, the notation for vectors is not uniform from course to course and from subject to subject. So you should be familiar with both the ijk representation and the representation as, as an ordered triple, if you will, inside the pointy brackets, in the pointy parentheses, if you will. But if we have a position vector that tells you the terminal point of a vector whose initial point is at the origin. It traces out a curve. You trace out the terminal point of the vector. If it's a continuous position function, then this should be lowercase. I am negative if you like that. Then the derivative of the position function, which is found just by taking the derivatives of its component functions, is tangent to the curve at, uh, the tangent to the curve traced out by the position vector. So for example, if we had a position vector, I know this is in three dimensions, but we can knock off the z component, the, the k component, and take it down to two dimensions, or just pretend that this function is zero. That way everything stays in the x, y plane. Then if we had some position functions graph, it looks like this, so we'll say this is the graph of r of t, meaning you put in one value, it tells you the end of the first vector, you put in another value, it puts gives you the end of another vector, and the endpoints, the terminal points of those vectors form this curve. Then by taking the derivative of this, it will give us a tangent vector, uh, r prime of t. And if I recall correctly, the direction of the tangent vector is in the same direction as the orientation of the curve. I hope I'm correct. Actually, that makes perfect sense, because this would be the force, uh, this would be the uh, this is the direction that the particle is going. So, of course, if the, if the, uh, if the orientation were reversed, then the, then the tangent vector would point the opposite direction. By the way, this looks like an F. It's not. It's an R with an arrow over it. So the derivative of the R function. But in order to do some of the things we need to do, we need to talk not just about a tangent vector, but about a unit tangent vector. And remember that a vector is a unit vector if its magnitude is 1. And the way to take any vector and turn it into a parallel 
unit vector, in other words, a vector in the same direction but of length one, all you have to do is uh, divide the vector by, the, by its magnitude. Remember, its magnitude is a scalar, so you would just divide each of its components by whatever that magnitude is. is. Um, so if we're gonna find the unit tangent vector, then it's just the derivative of our position function divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the position function. And remember, to find the magnitude of a vector, it's just the square root of the sum of the squares of its component functions. And since it's the derivative of r, then those component functions are the derivative of x, the derivative of y, and the derivative of z. All right, in the next video, we're gonna put this all together to talk about how to find the value of a line integral over a vector field.